this is the representation of the kind of quality of speakers that we have here at West Hawaii Forum. And we put these uh, monthly forums on to provide as much civic involvement and education on issues that are important to you, the community. We are one island. We are one community. Aloha, everybody. Long time no see. I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy. I'm Jane Clement. I am the president of Community Forums. For the past many years, we have delivered these forums to you in person, bringing in uh, guest speakers and content experts to help us discuss and address issues that are important to the community. But since we are in this COVID-19 pandemic, it has totally upended our lives. It has forced us to change the way we do things. So just like you, we are learning how to adapt to this new normal. So Community Forums is a, an all-volunteer nonprofit organization. And on behalf of our board members, uh, Mike Matsukawa, Pete Hoffman, Candy Ellsworth, Scott Ordway, and Isaiah Heyer, I would like to thank all of you for your continued support of community forums. And uh, for as long as we cannot gather in person quite yet, we will continue to deliver these forums to you uh, via this digital format. And today we are very, very happy to bring to you our first virtual forum. It's not only timely, it is extremely important. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our moderator today. She is a member of the Community Forums Board and also the Executive Director of uh, Kea Holi Center for Sustainability, formerly known as Friends of Nelha. Please welcome Candy Ellsworth. Aloha, everybody. Um, it's great to rejoin you. Uh, it's been a long time, and so we are now figuring out um, how to use uh, computers and Zoom meetings and webinars in our daily lives and we have uh, come to that point for community forums as well. So today, because as Jane said was timely, we have an election coming up and we have our, um, we have a presentation today um, from Pat that's going to tell us a little bit information about uh, the election this year, which is going to be much different than in the past. And so there's a lot of confusion and people might not be sure what, what, what's going on. Is it a mail by, is it a vote by mail? Is it, is it, um, are the thing, are the mailers that they're receiving authentic? Um, what should they do with them? When should they mail them? Um, and we're going to have all those questions answered today. So well, welcome. Uh, Pat, Nakamoto. Pat Nakamoto. Hi, thank you for having me here. I am very happy to be here and to provide information on our all male voting uh, to voters in our community. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, we have here a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, this presentation was put together by the County of Hawaii, the Elections Division and it will guide you through voting in Hawaii and what you need to know to cast your votes. The election office prepares for and conducts federal, state, and county elections, which occur every two years. Listed here are the offices that are up in this election year. The contests that appear on your ballot are dependent on the district that you live in. So the candidates on your ballot may be, may be different from someone who lives on another part of the island. The primary election will be held on August the 8th and the general election will be held on November the 3rd. When you receive your primary election ballot, it will look like this. During the primary election, you will need to choose a party ballot or the nonpartisan ballot and vote only in that one ballot. Any votes that are outside of that selected ballot will not be counted. The general election ballot will include the top two candidates of each political party from the primary election. During the general election, you may vote for the candidates of your choice. 
This is important to note that in the County of Hawaii, in the County of Hawaii contest, any candidate receiving a majority of the votes is automatically elected and will not appear on the general election ballot. These are the qualifications to register to vote. You must be a U.S. citizen, at least 16 years old to pre-register, and 18 years old to vote, and a resident of the state of Hawaii. There are several ways you can register to vote. Registration can be completed either online or by downloading an application and mailing it in or by visiting the county elections office. And we have an office here in Hilo and one also in Kona at the West Hawaii Civic Center. Reg registering to vote online you must have a Hawaii driver's license or a state ID. You can also register to vote when applying for a Hawaii driver's license or a state ID. All you need to do is complete the voter registration section of the form. You can also complete a voter registration application. These applications are available throughout the state at libraries, at your local post office, or you can contact the elections office at 961-8277. The deadline to register to vote for the primary election was on July 9th, and the deadline to request for a seasonal absentee ballot will be on August the 1st. The deadline to register to vote for the general election is on October the 5th, and the deadline to request for a seasonal absentee ballot is on October 27th. All ballots will be mailed to the local, your local mailing address. A seasonal request is for someone or a voter who wants their ballot mailed to a different address. The 2020 elections will be the first all mail elections for Hawaii voters. All properly registered voters will receive a ballot in the mail. No polling places will be open on election day. You should receive your mail ballot approximately 18 days prior to the election day. If you do not receive a ballot, please contact the elections office as soon as possible. With voting trends shifting towards casting ballots before election day rather than at a polling place, in 2019, the Hawaii State Legislature enacted Act 136. Act 136 established elections by mail statewide beginning with the 2020 primary election. Many Hawaii voters have skipped the polling places in recent years and instead have chosen to cast a ballot before election day. Turnout for early voting has continued to grow and in 2018, 87% of early voters statewide did so by casting a mail ballot. In the graph shown here, the orange and yellow lines show the declining polling place turnout, while the blue and the gray lines depict the incline of voting by mail. The election office has been working to confirm voters' mailing addresses by sending out election information notices to voters. Mailouts were sent in November 2019 and in January and April of 2020. These notices are non forwardable The voters are no longer at the address on their voter registration file. The post office returns the notice as being undeliverable. The voter then becomes inactive and will need to update their information before voting. All registered voters were mailed a yellow signature capture card. This card includes a section for voters to provide their signature. This signature will allow the elections office to maintain an up-to-date signature file the signatures will be used to confirm that the voter the signatures will be used to confirm that the voter signed 
the affirmation statement on their ballot return envelope. Where are you cards? All yellow cards that are returned by the post offices being undeliverable are flagged in our voter registration system. These voters are then sent a affordable white card. Once these cards get processed, these voters become inactive and must correct their information before being able to vote. Primary election ballots will be mailed out approximately 18 days before the election. So that would be around July 21st. And for the general election, they will be mailed out approximately 18 days before the election. So that would be around October the 16th. A properly marked ballot will count 100% of the time. The first step is to review the instructions before you begin marking your ballot. We suggest reviewing all contests and be sure to check both sides of the ballot card. To mark your choice, use a black or blue ink pen and fill the box to the left of your selection. Your mail ballot packet will include the ballot, a secrecy sleeve, a return envelope, and a reminder notice with a suggested date by when you should return your ballot if you're going to be mailing it in. Voter Services Centers. The Voter Services Centers will be open 10 days before and on election day. These, the hours of operation will be Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. The Voter Services Center will be open on election day, August the 8th, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The Voter Services Center will provide the following services. They will receive voted ballot envelopes. They will provide voting machine services for persons with special needs. They will register voters who missed the voter registration deadline. And these voters will need to vote at the Voter Services Center on election day or within that 10-day period while the voter services centers are open. And they will also provide other voting services that are provided by law. There will be two locations, one in Hilo at the County of Hawaii Alpuni Center and one in Kona at the West Hawaii Civic Center Building G. When you have completed voting your ballot, you are ready to return it. You will fold your ballot and place it into the secrecy sleeve. Then place the secrecy sleeve into the return envelope. Be sure to sign the affirmation statement on the return envelope. And that is really important. We have many voters who um, forget to sign the return, the affirmation statement. And we will need to, our office will need to contact these voters and um, this will delay the processing of their ballot. There are two ways to return your ballot. The first is by mail. Your ballot should be mailed two to three days before election day. This is to ensure we receive it by election day. The second way would be to drop the ballot off at a ballot drop site, which will include any of our election offices, a voter services center, or any official ballot drop-off, which will be located throughout the island. All ballots must be received by the elections office or at a drop box by 7 p.m. on election day. Ballot drop boxes are receptacles to receive voted ballot envelopes. These receptacles will become available five business days before the election. They will be available 24-7 beginning August the 3rd for the primary election and October 27th for the general election. All drop boxes will close at 7 p.m. on both election days. The receptacles will be located at the Hawaii County Building, the Pahoa Police Station, Rodney Yano Hall, West Hawaii Civic Center, the Waimea Police Station, and the Naalehu police station.
voters will also be able to drop voted ballots off at the uh, Voter Services Center in the Bristol Rice Civic Center or at the um, County of Police Center. Your ballot journey. updated is really, really important. Um, in order for every voter to receive their ballot, we must have their correct mailing address. So please keep that information current. And um, if you haven't received your ballot, uh, don't wait. Call us within uh, a week before the election so that there is enough time for us to um, process your ballot and get it to you as quickly as possible. So we want to thank you for um, sitting and going through this presentation with us. And if you have any questions about the elections, please call us at 961-8277, or you can reach us at heloelect at hawaiicounty.gov. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pat. Thank you for taking time to join us and figure out this um, this, this whole new world of technology that we're in now. Um, and once again, that was Pat Nakamoto, the Hawaii County Elections Administrator, sharing with us how our primary election and uh, the election this fall will continue. And so uh, we do have a couple questions. So the ballots uh, were supposed to drop in July 21st, and they arrived in everyone's mailboxes a full week ahead of time. Was that planned or was this something that uh, just happened? Okay, by law, we were supposed to mail out the ballots approximately 18 days before the election. But the uh, ballots got uh, processed and they were ready to be mailed out earlier than we had anticipated. So we thought that was just great. You know, the sooner, the earlier we could get the ballots to the voters, that would give them an opportunity to study the ballot, get familiar with it. So we did um, decide to mail the ballots out uh, earlier than the uh, 18 days that were required. Okay. Um, so we had been sharing, uh, everyone that has been involved in this process has been talking about, oh, make sure you register to vote, make sure you register to vote before the deadline, make sure you get there before the deadline. And so now we're hearing that you could possibly register day of. So if you did miss the deadline, you could still go to your voting center that day and register and vote? Yes, that is correct. 
Um, of course, it's you know it's a great thing. Hawaii is a um, all male state, and in addition to that, you know we are also a same day registration state. And so, you know, it's always better to register by the registration deadline mm -hmm. because it gives us an opportunity to mail the ballots to you. And we are an all-mail state, so we really want to encourage voters to vote on their mail ballot. And this year especially because, you know, the concern with the situation we're facing now and for all voter safety, mm -hmm. you know, there's this health concern. And so we, what we don't want is for voters to be standing in line at the Voter Services Center. And so um, you know, I want to you know, encourage all voters to vote on their mail ballot. Okay. But if you did miss the registration deadline to answer your question, yes, they can go to the Voter Services Center within that 10 day period and they can register there and vote there. Okay, well that's great information. Um, also, when the ballots do arrive, are they kept somewhere, or are they tallied immediately, or are they all uh, tallied at the same time? Um, when we receive the ballots, we, uh, the voted ballots, you know, with the return envelopes, mm -hmm. um, they, what happens is we receive them in our voter registration database, and that's to mark the voters as voted. And then the ballots are stored in a secure area. And um, prior to election day, we do begin a pre-processing procedure. And um, that is done at the counting center prior to election day. But the ballots do not get counted until election night when the election results are released. OK. So we should have a pretty good idea that evening of um, how things are going. Correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so, what if your signature doesn't match the historical signatures that are on record? Some people yes. don't even um, remember how they legally, but that's a really important thing, isn't it? Yes, especially with an all mail election. And that's why we sent out those signature capture cards the yellow card, those mm -hmm. signature capture cards were really important because we wanted to be certain that we have the voters' most current signature. Um, you know, over the years, people's signatures tend to change. Mm -hmm. And um, if the signature on the affirmation statement of the envelope does not match what we have on file, the voters will be con contacted and have an opportunity to correct that. Will they be contacted via uh, phone? Uh, we will contact by phone by, or by email. Okay. What if a what if a voter never turned in their yellow card? Uh, where do you find their signature? We uh, we will revert back to the last signature we had on file. Okay. Because every registered voter. We do have the signature on file. It's just that it may not be their current signature. I see. Okay, so they will have a chance to rectify that if there is a problem. Yes, so if they didn't um, turn in a uh, yellow signature capture card and their mm -hmm. signature has not changed that much, then their ballot will get accepted. Okay, and if they do not put their signature on the outside of the envelope, it doesn't get counted at all. No, that's not correct. Um, if they fail to sign the affirmation statement, we will contact them. Oh, okay. And give them an opportunity to uh, correct an error and come in and sign the, um, the ballot. Okay. Oh, that's really good information. Yes. Um, the voters will have five business days after the election to correct an error. Okay. Okay. Well, um, so we, we, should, we still should have a pretty good idea that evening how things are going, though, yes, from previous yes, ballots, sure. um, even if there yes. was a problem, um, unless it's an election that comes down to 30, 40 votes. 
Yeah, if there's a really, really close election, then we're going to need to go through an auditing process. Okay. And, um, you know, that race, the results may get delayed, but for all of the other races, they should get the results. Okay, wonderful. And just to recap, if people did miss the registration date, deadline, they can register same day, but preferred that they come in a few days beforehand because we, the last thing that we want is a lot of people in line outside of voting centers because of COVID-19. Correct, yeah. But if it's, a, if it's an emergency and they really did forget and they really want to vote, they can show up at their voting center and get their vote in. Yes, so anyone who missed the voter registration deadline, the July 9th registration deadline, yes, they can go to a voter services center, register to vote, and vote there. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Pat. That's really great information. I didn't even know some of those things, um, and I've been researching it myself. So um, do you have any other words you wanted to say, Jane? So I am, so I am going to um, just say mahalo to Pat. Pat, thank you so much for your time today and for being so patient with us as we try to figure out this whole technology Zoom thing. And uh, thank you also for giving us a very informative educational presentation today. There were a lot of information that you, you gave today that I did not even know myself. So we will be sure to uh, share this, um, this forum uh, far and wide so that people can get educated as well. I want to uh, say thank you to Candy for also Thank being you. patient <laughs> as we try to figure out how to start this uh, Zoom forum, this virtual forum. And thank you for moderating. And to all of you, thank you for watching at home. Until we can uh, gather again in person and meet again in person, be safe, be well, be kind to each other, wear face masks when in public, wash your hands frequently, stay home when you're sick. We can't get through this if we work together. Aloha. This is the representation of the kind of quality of speakers that we have here at West Hawaii Forum. And we put these uh, monthly forums on to provide as much civic involvement and education on issues that are important to you, the community. We are one island. We are one community.